All right, welcome to another Game Maker How To. What we're going to take a look at today is how to change or uh, display an energy bar. But instead of your standard energy bar, which just draws a rectangle, you have this kind of change where the change is nice and smooth and fluid. And so as the energy goes up and down, you'll see it has a nice little effect there instead of it just jumping straight to the value that you want it to be at. Okay, and the concept's pretty easy. If you don't have any familiarity with drawing out rectangles, obviously there'll be a bunch of rectangles drawn. Uh, so, you know, you should check out a drawing rectangle how-to. Um, if not, let's just jump into this one. And again, you'll see two different types here. One where I have the energy bar centered and one where I have the energy bar just justified to the left. Okay, let's take a peek what we did. Okay, first of all, there's three main variables here that are going to be in action. And you'll see here I've done everything in three different scripts. I basically have a uh, global object, and all it does is it runs the script, initialize globals. And then I've just added the left and right just to take energy away and give energy just so I can test this out. Obviously, that would be part of your game, right? You decide when you want to do that stuff. And I have this object called the energy bar. And the energy bar really has two things in the step. It updates the energy. And in the draw event, it calls draw energy bar. So these are basically my three things right here. So let's take a look at the variables and the idea. I only have three variables here to get this effect going pretty nicely. Uh, global energy is going to be the main energy that you're keeping track of for your player. But then there's this one here, energy target. Now what energy target is, is that's actually the energy that you're trying to reach. So if you take, uh, let's say, 50 energy away from the player, you're actually going to change energy target and drop that down by 50. And if you give them energy, you give energy to energy target. So it's basically the target energy that the player is trying to reach or the bar is trying to reach. And that's what the global energy variable will move up to. So if target energy goes up to 100, then global energy will slowly raise itself up to reach the target of 100. If energy target drops down to zero, then energy is going to slowly reach zero. Now the rate at which it tries to reach the target is based on this value here. So if you want it to go faster, you can plunk this up to you know, some bigger number. And if you want it just to be a trickle effect, you, know, you can lower the number down. So for now, actually, I'm just going to change it to 10. I'm going to slow it down a bit just so we can see this effect working. So if we give it a quick run, you'll see here I've drawn out these two variables, energy and energy target. And as I hit the left arrow, I'm taking down the variable energy target. So as I take it down, I'll take it down a couple times quickly. You can see that it's lower than energy. Energy is always catching up or dropping down to the target. Right? And so that's the basic idea. Now, how do we do that actual change? Well, that actual change, energy always trying to catch up to the target, is done inside of update energy. Now, that should be run, like we said, in the step event of some object so that it's constantly updating itself. So you'll see here, I'm just calling the update energy script. Let's take a peek. It's only a couple lines. And here we go. So the first thing I'm doing here with this energy is I'm taking the energy target and I'm subtracting energy to find the difference, right? How far apart are they? If the difference is currently zero, I get out of there, right? There's no work. The bar doesn't need to be changed. The variables are all okay. Now, otherwise, the script's just going to keep going down. I'm going to calculate how much I want to change the energy value by. And all I do is I take that difference. So let's assume that we have some nice values, like my target is 100 and the player's energy is 50. So target's 100 minus 50 would be 50. So the difference is 50, and I'm timesing by the energy slide rate. Now remember that was that small little value there, like I think I set it to 0.10. So basically if the difference was 50, I'm timesing by 0.10, then I'm going to change by 50 times 0.10, which is 5. So the whole idea here is, is don't just change by the difference, or that would be the instant change, right? And that's what we're trying to avoid here. We're trying to avoid the, uh, the rapid change and go for a nice smooth one. 
So that's why it times by this value. And you can see here is if this value is small, then the change is going to be smaller and it's going to be more of a fluid long lasting change. Once I know the change, I actually commit the change. So I make the energy go up by change. Keep in mind, change could be a negative value depending on these two variables, right? You could have 50 minus 100. So difference will be negative, change will be negative, and the energy will actually end up going down. Now the last thing here that a lot of people sort of forget to do is, you know, when you get close enough, these values, you know, become so close to each other, you pretty well call them equal. You should just set them equal, right, to save the work. So here what I'm doing is I'm making use of a little absolute value function built into GameMaker. This removes the plus or the minus sign of the value. So when the energy minus the global energy target is less than 0.25, right? And I could have just done this since I've already done that in the line above. I may as well just write difference. When the absolute value of difference is less than this, I'm just going to consider them close enough. And I just set them dead equal. So make the energy exactly equal to the energy target. That way it saves a little work of doing this stuff in other step events, right? Because it'll come here, the difference will be zero, and then it won't do anything else because it'll just exit. Okay, so that's a little nice finishing touch there. Now that's what's controlling the variables, right? And making them slide towards each other. Now the big part is drawing this out. Now this will be easy to do as long as you know your rectangle code. If you don't know how to draw rectangles, then this code is going to look awful to you. So, you know, take a few minutes and go learn the draw code. So here's my actual drawing, which happens in the draw event. So draw energy bar. Now keep in mind, I have a lot of variables here because I'm drawing two different energy bars. The first thing I've done here is I've made a little variable XP. This one is the X position for the center of the bar. This is specifically for this first uh, bar I draw here. This is really all the code is right here, right? And then this one here is for the second bar. So let's just look at that centered bar. I'm saying I want the center of the bar to be at 300 and a height of 50. I'd like the width of the bar to be 500 when it's at full, you know, 100%. And the height of the bar to be 50 and a 5 pixel border around it. Now basically what I do is the only real calculation I have to do is find out what percentage of this 500 minus the border do I have to actually fill. So I take my global energy, divide by 100, assuming 100 is your maximum energy, and I get a percentage. So these things will be like values like if I have 75 out of 100, you know, percent is really going to be equal to something like 0.75. Okay. Now keep it in mind, now that we have the percentage of the bar to draw, all I do is I just draw two, three rectangles here. This is just the border of the rectangle. And you can see here, I'm using that width, right, that I've set as 500. So I take my center position, I go left half of the width, and here I'm going right half of the width from my uh, XP position. I have a height of YP. And then YP plus height. I switch to white, fade a little bit, and then I draw a little inner rectangle. And this little inner rectangle, really it's the same equation, but I've just tagged on the border. So I'm not quite going left as much, right? So I'm creating a border. And then same thing here, I'm minusing the border. Okay, so that's just sort of the outer uh, white border for this bar. Now here's the actual green bar inside that's changing. So I just switch to green, and here's that percentage being used. When I start at my center point, XP, and I start to go left, right, I'm minusing. How far do I have to go left to draw my green bar? Well, width divided by 2 minus the border, that would have taken me all the way to the border. I don't want to go all the way. I want to go a percentage times that width. And basically, if it's 50%, 0 0.5 times that value will basically take me halfway to the left side. And you'll see I do the same thing then from the center point, 
when I determine the right side of the green rectangle, I go percentage times that same sort of equation. And that handles that one. And so when you actually watch that one go, I mean, it does what it does. If you have to write these numbers slowly down to convince yourself it works. When you see here, I'm at like 35%. Basically, from the center point, I've gone 35% out to the left-hand side. And from the center point, I've gone 35% of that full width out to here. Now, the second bar, I'm just doing everything right from the left. In a way, it's actually easier to do this one. But I don't know, I like that top one better. It sort of gives a, a better effect that you don't see quite as often. So the second bar basically uses very similar equations. Draw energy bar. And you'll see here, all I'm doing is I basically do the exact same border. Okay, so the same border code. And the only difference here is when I go to draw the changing green energy bar, I draw from the very left. That's when I start that rectangle. So from my left position, XP, from the border, and I draw all the way to XP plus border, plus that green rectangle goes a percentage of the entire width. But you have to remember to minus two times the border. Okay, that sort of reached the end there. And you know what? I may be wrong here. Maybe you just have to minus border. Uh, you can figure out whether which how the math works there and whether that works. But that's really it. So this one just grows by the right side of the rectangle depending on the percentage, right? So when the percentage is low, you're not adding anything. Basically, the rectangle stops at XP, the XP plus border, and that's right where you started, XP plus border. So again, if you get your rectangle code, this probably made sense to you. Uh, the real key here was just this. Find out the percentage of the bar that you have to draw and how it's used, right? Percentage times the size of the bar. And same thing here. Percentage times the size of the bar you need. And down here, I was just drawing the two different energies so you could see it work. So, nice little effect. You can find that at uh, gameprogrammingcourse.com in the uh, resources folder there. These projects are there uh, if you want to nab this code. But I like it. It's good. Uh, students have used this in the past. You know, it makes it way better than just drawing the energy out with text, right? Have a cool looking bar there. Not too much code. Thanks for watching. Hope that helps. Hey guys, if you like this video, why not click the like button or even better, subscribe to this channel, share it with a couple friends. That's what keeps us going. Thanks.